it's Alice and today I'm discovering if I actually read the books that I put on TBRs. So for this video we are going all the way back to 2015, back to when I was writing on a website called Everything Alice and it was a blogspot site and it was janky as hell but I loved it and blogging was such a huge time sink but I do really miss it. Obviously I love doing the channel instead now because it's much easier to fit in and I find it more satisfying than I ever did with blogging. <laughs> but these are going to be my earliest TBRs slash blog posts that have like books I want to read in them. So some of them aren't straight up TBRs but it's all the posts from my first year of blogging, my first complete full year, in which I've expressed interest in reading certain books and discovering whether I actually read them or whether they're still languishing on my TBR or if I've completely decided I'm not interested in them anymore. So I'm going to be revisiting eight posts for this and without further ado let's have a look and see me completely shame myself because it's pretty obvious I'm not going to have read most of them. <laughs> so to start off with we are going to something called the Endless Possibilities Readathon. This was apparently in conjunction with Good Tales Book Tours. I don't remember Good Tales book tours at all but this was from the 28th of May 2015. Okay so first up The Lover's Dictionary by David Leverton. So I actually read that one. I didn't think much of it, it was very simple but I read it. I also have Panic by Lauren Oliver which I definitely read. I don't know if I would have read it for this readathon, but that's the one when the girl's like taking part in like some kind of weird game thing. I think. Yeah, I definitely read it. I just don't really remember much about it. And third on that list is Adverbs by Daniel Handler. Daniel Handler, that's how many snicker. Did I read that? I'm gonna run over to Goodreads because I honestly, for the life of me, I can picture the cover of it, but god damn, I can't think of what the book was like. Three hours later. Oh, apparently I gave it two stars. So I did read it, I just probably shouldn't have. Oh, apparently it was confusing and mind boggling. It's not a novel. <laughs> okay, so I've read the first three books on this video, which is good, um, and I don't remember particularly enjoying any of them, so. Let's move on to a Top 10 Tuesday post from the 15th of September 2015, 10 series I need to hurry up and start. Now, I'm not a huge series reader, I start them and I don't finish them, so the likelihood of me actually having finished any of these series is minuscule, but I'm hoping I will have at least started one of them, but we'll find out. Ah, 10th was The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. I actually read this two years ago, so not in 2015, in 2020. So it took me five years to read that, but I did read all four of them, and I'm currently reading the Dreamer trilogy as well, so I've done pretty well with that one. In ninth place we have The Delirium trilogy by Lauren Oliver. I read the first book less than a year ago. So again, I didn't read it in 2015, but I have read it by now, which is good. In eighth place we have The Wither Trilogy by Lauren Stefano. That is on my These Books Will Self-Destruct in 12 Months list, so I need to read that in the next two months, and I'm planning on it. So I'm gonna have gotten that one done as well, that's good. Seventh, we have The Match Trilogy by Ali Condi, which I read last year. I did a huge rant review on this one, I really did not end up enjoying it, and I kind of wish that I'd just given up after the first book, but I have read that entire series. In sixth place we had The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. I read Cinder last year. I've actually started that series. This is awesome. I haven't read any of the others. This was before Winter even had a cover. That's how long ago this blog post was. Damn. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed the first book. I thought it was a little bit predictable, but I'm looking forward to carrying on with the rest of the series. So that's pretty good. Ooh. In fifth place, we have The Daughter of Smoke and Bones series by Lainey Taylor. I own all of these on my Kindle, I own all of these physically, and I've never read a single one of them. I want to, I'm still like super intensely interested in that one, and I think when I do read it I'm going to binge it very quickly, I just don't know why I haven't started it yet. 
In fourth place, we have the Maze Runner trilogy by James Dashner. I'm not really interested in these anymore. James Dashner did some inappropriate things and I don't want to support him as an author. I did put these in an unhauled video a few months ago, which Sean saved them because he's still interested in them, which fair enough. If he can put who James Dashner is as a person to one side, then that's his personal preference. Um, but I don't think I'll ever end up reading those. In third place, we have Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. I still haven't started this series, but I'm currently catching up on the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I've still got A Court of Frost and Starlight and A Court of Silver Flames to read. And I'm up to date on Crescent City and I absolutely love it. So I'm planning on starting Throne of Glass soon-ish. I just can't believe that I said I was determined to get around to them seven years ago, just after book four came out. I'm not good at reading things. In second place, we have the Grisha Trilogy by Lee Bardugo. I actually would have read this like right after this post came out because I've written on there that I got it out of the library and I read it them all out of the library, like one after the other after the other. Um, didn't love them, but I can kind of get the hype. I'm planning on rereading them before I watch the Shadow and Bone TV series, so I can give you my opinions on those when I read them the second time. And in first place, we have The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, which I still haven't read. So the ones that I haven't read, I'm still intensely interested in like planning on reading soon. And the ones that I haven't read are ones, wait no, the ones that I have read are ones that I've only read recently, apart from the Grisha trilogy, which is quite funny when you think about the fact that like seven years ago I said I was going to read these books and it's taken me that long to get around to it. But it proves that my reading tastes haven't changed all that much. <laughs> like I am still interested in the same things I was interested in back then. We will move on to 10 books I need to read in autumn and this was the 22nd of September 2015. Oh god, okay. Well, if I don't if I didn't read them in any of the autumn so far, maybe I can read them this autumn. This could be my autumn TBR. <laughs> so we have Ashes to Ashes by Jenny Han and Siobhan Vivian. Um and I think this was the third and final book in the Fire with Fire series. It might be the second one, but I did actually read this whole series and I enjoyed the first two. I didn't like the way that it ended. Um, I thought that it was a bit wild and wacky, um, but I did read that one. In ninth place, I've got Hello, Goodbye and Everything in Between by Jennifer E. Smith. And I'm just going to have to look up which one that is because I don't have an image of it in my blog post, which doesn't help me. Um, because if it's the pink one that I'm picturing, Sean will have probably already put it on the screen by now. Yes, I did read that one. I gave it three stars. I enjoyed that one. Yeah, that was, um, sent from Headline Publishing. So a huge thank you to Headline for sending me a book seven years ago that I actually read. In eighth place, we have Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. I did read this and I loved it. So I was right that I needed to read that one. In seventh place, I have Autumn by David Moody. I was recommended this by a colleague when I worked at the library and I think I read four out of five of the Autumn books. I missed one of them somehow in the order. I read like one, two, three and five or one, two, four and five. Um, so I will eventually finish that series off, but I just can't be bothered if I'm honest. Like I've, I know how it ends. I don't really want to go and fill in the gaps. Um, but they're all standalone, so it is a series you can read out of order if you need to, and it doesn't matter if you've missed an instalment. Um, but I did. I did definitely read the first one. <laughs> In sixth place, I have Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. As I said, I read the Grisha trilogy. I did read this one. I'm extremely proud of that, and I was obviously very interested in it back then if it was on, like, two TBR posts, like, two weeks apart. In fifth place, I have Lips Touched Three Times by Lainey Taylor. This is a short story collection and I did read it and I did really enjoy it. And this also made me more interested in Lainey Taylor's other writing. Um, and it's probably the reason that I read Strange the Dreamer and loved it. So I will read Dora Smoke and Bone eventually. I just don't know when. In fourth place, we have Landline by Rainbow Rowell. Still have no real recollections of this one. I definitely read it. I still have no idea what I've rated it probably like a two or a three to be honest. I, I'm not a huge fan of Rainbow Rowell. <laughs> In third place I have A Game of Thrones by George R.R. Martin. I have not read this one yet. I was planning on reading it as part of a video series last year. I'm hoping to read it as part of a video series this year. Whether it's going to happen or not we will find out. <laughs> In second place we have The Coldest Girl in Cold Time by Holly Black. I did read this. It's my favourite Holly Black book that I've read so far and that's not really saying much because I haven't really enjoyed most of her books but that one is one that I would highly recommend. So if you're not a fan of Holly Black's Faye writing, try The Coldest Girl in Cold Time because it's vampires. 
And then in first place, I have Trigger Warning by Neil Gaiman, which was a short story collection, and I did read it, and I did love it. So, well, I say love it. I remember enjoying it intensely at the time, but now I can't really remember anything about it, so I don't know how much I did love it. But that means out of this whole TBR, there's only one book that I haven't read. So that's pretty cool. And it's one that I, again, I'm still actively interested in reading. Like, Game of Thrones is right here like I could pick that up and start reading that now if I wanted to because I'm still that intensely interested in it that it's right behind me <laughs> next up we have a blog post from November the 11th titled F top five books I didn't finish yet so I'm one of those people that when I get halfway through a book if I'm not enjoying it I'll put it down and then I'll plan on picking it up again eventually and I won't always get to it and then it just languishes on my Goodreads currently reading for like years and years and years until I get fed up with myself and not actually read it. So I'm assuming some of these are still going to be floating around. I'm hoping that I managed to knock most of them off in 2020, uh, 2019 time because just before Ezra was born I did make a concerted effort to finish some of my currently reading books whether these are going to be ones that I did that for we're gonna find out so in fifth place I have Undone by Cat Clark I did read this I read this just before Ezra was born actually so this was one of the ones that I tried to knock off then um this one was hard to read because it's about a girl whose best friend commits suicide after I think he's either outed or he's bullied for being gay even though he's not actually out yet um and his best friend is obviously grieving and she decides to take down the popular kids that she believes are the reason that he died by suicide um it's a very very difficult read very powerful um and the first time I read it I was just in too bad of a place so I managed to get 100 pages in and then I had to put it down because I just couldn't physically push my way through Second time when I actually finished it, I think I gave it five stars and I read it very, very quickly. I flew through it and it made me want to cry my eyes out, but it was very powerful. In fourth place, I have The Raven Boys by Maggie C. Farter. Again, as I said, I have read the whole Raven cycle now, but I did start this just before Ezra was born or just after Ezra was born. It might have been just like the week after he was born. Um, I struggled with the Raven Boys and I don't know why. I kept getting like 30 pages in and then just hitting a brick wall and I just couldn't get any further. I must have tried picking it up either six or seven times. Yeah, oh, apparently I read the first 50 pages of the Raven Boys twice and I couldn't get into it. The last time I tried to pick this book up was January 2013. And that was just before the Raven King came out. Um, but I know I definitely tried again after that. So yeah, probably five times. It was like the fifth attempt before I actually managed to push my way through it. There's just something about the first book that doesn't absorb me. The second book, I love the third book. I love the fourth book. It's a bit of a disappointing ending, but I am really glad that I persevered with that one in the end. Um, in third place, we have The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, I have not finished The Return of the King yet. Um, I haven't even started it. I didn't really enjoy the first two. But I did finish The Fellowship of the Ring and I did read The Two Towers as well. So I have made progress on this series since 2015. But again, I think that was 2020. Like, that was only a couple of years ago that I actually forced my way through the first two. There's just something about these books that bores me. I know that's a controversial thing to say because... Obviously, Lord of the Rings is one of the most loved series of all time, especially loved fantasy series, but it just doesn't work for me. In second place, we have Emma by Jane Austen. Um, I have finished this one. I did like it more second time around. It's still not my favourite Jane Austen story, um, but I, again, I'm glad I persevered with that one. And in first place, I've got Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling, which I have still not read. Um, I didn't even get through the third book on my reread I think I reread the first two and then I couldn't get any further than that um I'm trying but uh, I don't know maybe one day but not for a while yet so out of that one I've only got the one left to go so that's pretty good as well oh this is going way better than I thought it was going to I thought this was just going to be me shaming myself and this is me thinking that like 2015 Alice had some good TBRs man like there are some books on here that I've really loved we will move on to 10 2016 debuts I can't wait to get my hands on. This was published on the 1st of December 2015. I think this one is going to be more of a fail because I can imagine that it's a lot of books that I'd seen other people talking about that might have only been published in America. So I might physically not have been able to get my hands on some of these, but I might still be interested in them. We'll find out. In 10th place, I have Black Hearts by Nicole Castroman. Uh... It's the origin story of Blackbeard the Pirate. 
I can't even remember this existing, if I'm honest. It's got a cool cover. It's like the pirate ship in the bottle. I can see why I was interested in it, but I haven't read that. In ninth place, I have The Leaving Season by Kat Jordan. Again, I have not read that one. Uh, I don't recognise the cover. I don't recognise the description. There's a tragedy. Someone's boyfriend is going and she can't wait for him to come back next year, but there's a tragedy. Sounds sad. Um, again, I can see why I was interested in it. It's got a really beautiful cover, but I definitely haven't read that one. In eighth place, I've got This Raging Light by Estelle Law. I have read that. I loved it. Um, it was very powerful. Um, it's a girl whose mum leaves after her dad has like a mental breakdown and it was a very interesting story about like the responsibilities of being an older sibling raising your younger sibling and kind of having to grow up yourself far earlier than you should have to. Um, so I would recommend that one. Seventh, I've got Suffer Love by Ashley Herring Blake. I recognise the author's name and I recognise the cover, but I definitely haven't read it. Uh, and I can't remember anything about it. Sixth, How It Ends by Catherine Lowe. Do not remember, don't recognise the author's name, don't remember the cover. Um, kind of looks semi-interesting, but don't remember a thing about it. Fifth is The Year We Fell Apart by Emily Martin. I did like this one. Um, it's like a girl who, like, in the space of a year, like, her whole personality changes. And I think it's a case of, like, it goes through the seasons, like, seeing how she changes back. I'm probably making that up. Um, I remember reading it on Riveted Lit because I can remember I was reading it on the computer at the library when I should have been doing work and I was not doing work. But it obviously didn't have much of an impact on me. Fourth is A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallero. I'm still interested in the Charlotte Holmes series. Um, I just haven't had a chance to get hold of any of them because I don't think they've ever been published in the UK. They've, there's four or five now and they've all got beautiful covers and I've heard good things about them and I keep seeing them pop up, especially as like recommendations for people who like to Truly Devious and things like that. Um, I will read those eventually, just not yet. Third is The Girl From Everywhere by Heidi Heilig. I own it. I haven't read it. I own the sequel too and I haven't read that either. Maybe one day. Something about me saying I was interested in pirate books and then not actually reading them, apparently. Two was The Way I Used To Be by Amber Smith. Um, this is about a girl who gets raped by her best friend and it's a... No, her brother's best friend? Let me see. Yeah, it's told in four parts about a girl who gets raped by her brother's best friend and how it affects her. Um, it still sounds like a book that would interest me and I still love that cover. I just haven't read it yet. And first is This Is Where It Ends by Marie Nishkamp and I have read this one and I did love it and I actually finished it in the pub on New Year's Eve 2016. Like, New Year's Eve 2015 into New Year's Day 2016. All my friends are like sat drinking and I'm just reading on my Kindle because that book just blew me away. Um... So I did read that one and I'm glad I read that one and that was definitely a good one to get to. This is more of a fail as I expected it would be, but still not too bad. Like I've still read quite a few of those or I've owned them and I'm still planning on reading them. We'll move on to <sighs> series I'm reading next year. This was from the 23rd of December, 2015. Let's be honest, I've said I don't read many series. I'm not likely going to have read any of these, am I? Oh no, what am I doing? <sighs> okay. Oh, okay. Oh my god, I remember what I was doing. Oh shit. It was like a TBR with every month being me reading a different series. Like I was planning on binging a different series every month. I completely forgot I even planned to do this. It was such a good idea. I can see why I failed, but it was such a good idea. Oh no, this is really gonna be a fail. January was the Red Rising trilogy by Pierce Brown. You all know me. You know that I've read Red Rising and you know that I've read Red Rising. Yeah, because it was a reread. <laughs> I was rereading the series, getting ready for Morningstar. And I did read Morningstar that month. I did read it like as soon as it came out. So that was a win. I don't think it's going to be wins any further. In February, I was planning on reading The Anna and the French Kiss Companion novels by Stephanie Perkins, and then in brackets, plus The Raven Cycle. Well, as I told you, I read The Raven Cycle in 2019, 2020, so I did not read it in 2016. That was a fail. Have I finished The Anna and the French Kiss series? No, I never read Isla. I read Anna and Ola. I would have read both of those in this month, but I haven't even picked Isla up. Um, oh, these are likely to be quick reads. Yeah, so quick that I'm still waiting seven years to start one of them. Oh, Jesus, Paz Alice, you were too enthusiastic. 
In March, I was planning on reading the Half-Life trilogy by Sally Green. Um, I'd already read Half Bad and I needed to reread it and I didn't. And I still didn't read Half Wild and I still didn't read Half Lost. So that was a fail. April, The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. As I already said, I still haven't read those. May, The Fifth Wave Trilogy by Rick Yancey. Nope, I haven't read those either. <laughs> Oh Jesus, I've read the fifth wave, never read the second book, never read the third book, kind of forgot that they existed until now, but like they're still pretty covers. June, The Lord of the Rings. As I said, I read the first two, but that was like two years ago, not seven years ago. July, The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. Yeah, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I read the first one last year. Uh, August, The Maze Runner. I've already addressed that. September, Harry Potter. What was I thinking? Trying to read the whole Harry Potter series in one month when I can barely even get through one of the books. Oh my god. Um, I have... I tried to reread these a couple of years after this. Not right then. And I've reread them again since and I'm still not getting past book three. October was Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I read the first book in that series on audiobook last year. And I still haven't continued on with the rest of the series. But at least I've started it. November was the Tomorrow series by John Marsden. I read the first book and then bought the whole box set. And then I was planning on rereading the first one and finally carrying on with the rest. And I didn't do it. I still haven't reread the first one. And December was A Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. Martin. Which, again, there's no way I'm going to read all of these chunky old mole fuckers in one month. What was I thinking? But yeah, I haven't even read the first one because I'm a failure. Sorry. This is now becoming mildly more embarrassing, so let's see how I do on the next one. We've got 10 books I want Santa to leave under my tree, and this was on the 22nd of December. 2015 still, obviously. In 10th place, we had She-Hulk, Volume 1. No. <laughs> um, I want to read She-Hulk still, but they didn't have it in the library. Yes, I'm in my pyjamas again, don't judge me. Um, they didn't have it in the library and I hoped to get it eventually so that I could read it and I still haven't gotten hold of it so I still haven't read She-Hulk but I'm still interested in the story. In ninth place I had the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy which I've already said I haven't read and Father Christmas didn't leave those for me. I bought the first one on eBay a couple months later and then got the others on Kindle Daily Deal when they came up. Eight was The Walled City by Ryan Groudon. I do own that now um, because I found it in a charity shop a few months later, but I haven't read it. Seventh was The Wrath of the Dawn by Rennie Ardie. I've heard a lot of amazing things about this one. I've got a feeling I've got it on my Kindle now, but I still haven't read it. In sixth place, I've got The Mara Dyer Trilogy by Michelle Hodkin. I would have read the first two at this point. I still haven't read the third one. It's like I'm saying, like, I would have read the first two at this point, but then I read the third one afterwards. No, I didn't. I never finished the series. Um, I own the first one because I found it in a charity shop and I've got the rest of them on my Kindle, so I will reread those eventually and hopefully finish the series, but I have at least read the first one. In fifth place was Captain Marvel by Kelly Sue DeConnick. Um, I do love this run. I read it out the library after this still don't own it um but i did read that one in fourth place was snow like ashes by sarah rash at this point it hadn't been published in the uk when it did get published in the uk or whether the library got an american copy i can't remember but i borrowed it out of the library read the whole series didn't love it in third place carry on by rainbow rowell i got this for christmas i got this as soon as it came out and i got a couple of copies of it actually um and i only read it in 2019 but i did read that one in second place I had Binge by Tyler Oakley. Mum got this for me and she got it signed and I still haven't read it. It's very short and thin so I'm thinking of reading it. Sean wanted me to unhaul it because he was like I don't think you're actually interested in it anymore but I am so I have rescued it from his unhaul <laughs> but yeah I, I'm not sure when I'll get to it. And in first place was Morningstar which I've read and which I didn't get for Christmas. Actually to be fair, I might have gotten it for Christmas because I know I got sent an advanced copy of it. So I might have been sneaky and actually got that one. It was either for Christmas or like for New Year that they sent it. So I'll take that as a win. But yeah, not all of the ones on that TBR read either. And then last but not least, I've got... Oh no... <laughs> I've just seen what the top one on here is and I've already said I haven't read it. We've got from the 29th of December 2015, 
the 10 most anticipated releases from January to June. <sighs> An intent place is The Last Star by Rick Gancy, and I still haven't read it. Nope, sorry. Uh, ninth place was Summer Loss by Ali Condi. I've read a few Ali Condi books, but I haven't read Summer Loss. I'd forgotten it even existed. It's still a gorgeous cover. I don't know if I'm interested in it, but apparently it's based around a theatre festival. That sounds interesting, but... I haven't read it. In eighth place is A Tyranny of Petticoats edited by Jessica Spotswood, so it's a short story collection. I'm still interested in it because it's a short story collection. I've got a feeling that Tess Sharp might have had a short story in this collection. I might be making that up, um, but I haven't read it yet. I haven't ever seen it in the UK. Completely forgot that it existed. Um, in seventh place, I've got this Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. I actually got this in an owl crate box, so you'd think that would mean I had read it. <laughs> no. No, I still haven't. I still have it though, I'm interested in it. In sixth place, I've got The Incredible Adventures of Cinnamon Girl by Melissa Kyle. I have this on my neck galley. Um, I've had this on my neck galley for apparently six years and I'm still low key interested in it, but I don't know why I can't get into it. Like I tried, I tried to read it at the time and I was like, no, I don't want to force my way through it because I'll give it a terrible review and then apparently just never read it. So we'll see how that goes. In fifth place, I have Firsts by Laurie Elizabeth Flynn a great debut. I really love this one. It had quite a lot of controversy about it because it's about a girl who sleeps with guys to... So she sleeps with virgins who are in relationships so that she can teach them how to please their girlfriends so that when their girlfriends have their first times, it's actually really special for them. And it's a great concept. I know that it's like morally grey and I it had a lot of controversy, but I thought it was great. I loved it. Um, in fourth place, When We Collided by Emery Lord. Um, I still have it. It was in an Illumicrate box, actually, but I haven't read it yet. I have read a couple of Emery Lord's books since then, though, because I put on that I hadn't read any, but I have read a couple since then, so that's something. Um, in third place, A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. I have read it. I did not read it when it came out. I read it last year for the first time, so at least I read it, even if it wasn't in May 2016. In second place, Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. I haven't read it. I haven't read probably any Cassandra Clare books since I did this blog post. So hopefully I will read that eventually. Um, but just not yet. And in first place, Morningstar. Of course, that would be my most anticipated release of 2016. And I did read that, as I said. So I'm actually reading that again this month as well. So that makes me feel even better. So in conclusion, I feel like I am I am reading quite a lot of the books that I want to read. It's just taking me fucking ages to get to them. So if I'm setting a TBR now, in seven years time, I should probably have read most of it. Which is good because it means in seven years time, I will have actually started the Way of Kings, and I will have possibly begun the Mistborn trilogy, which is good. I would like to start them sooner than age 32 or 33, but I guess that's just going to depend on whether I can actually buck it up and like, buck up my ideas, suck it up, and just get on with actually reading what I'm saying I'm going to read <laughs> instead of procrastinating wildly. I hope that you enjoyed this video. It's been a lot of fun to film. It has been a little bit embarrassing, but it's also been nice to go back over my old blog posts and see that I haven't, like my reading tastes haven't actually changed much, even if I feel like they have. I feel like I guess I get less excited. I get excited about fewer books, which is good because it means I can actually remember what they're about and recognize the covers and not just be like, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that before in my life. Um, but yeah. I think I'm doing pretty well, so I'm quite happy with that. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to subscribe, we'd be super duper grateful. We post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so we'll see you again in another couple of days with another video. Bye! <laughs> What's I thinking?